welcome back. We're gonna do act one, scene one now. Um, okay, so a lot of this stuff that Samson and Gregory are saying, we don't really understand. And that's okay, because um, it's all like plays on words that we don't even necessarily use in the same way. But Shakespeare is showing his audience like, hey, I'm so smart and I'm so good with language. Here's like 45 different ways to make jokes about collar and collier and coals and all these words that kind of sound similar. So that's a lot of it. Um, Samson and Gregory are of the house of Capulet. Um, they're like uh, servants or they work for the house of Capulet at the very like most. They're maybe like cousins or something. They're not like the main dudes. They're not all that important. Um, but they get the fighting started and they open the scene. So that's their importance. Okay, so Samson and Gregory are like um, for acting like teenage boys. And they're like, hey, you're a coward. And um, they're like, no, I'm not. You are. La la. Um, so. Okay, I'm trying to figure out which. Samson says. I strike quickly being moved, so um, they better look out if they insult me. I'll strike like a snake. I'll make them pay. Um, so Gregory is the one who like challenges Samson, like, don't be a wussy. You know, put your money where your mouth is, dude. And Gregory says, to move is to stir, and to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, Thou runnest away. So, um, the translation is angry enough to run away, you won't stand and fight. <coughs> so, um, Gregory says, if you move, then you're running. And so, to be tough would be to stand. So, if you're moved, and moved is like motivated or pushed or like acting in some way. So if you move, then you're running. So Gregory tells Samson, you're just a coward. So Samson has to like show, no, I'm not. I'm tough. Um, I'm act one, scene one, page one right now. So I'm going to switch to page two. Okay. All right. So here's our first sex joke in the second page. Gregory says, thou art... That shows thee a weak slave, for the weakest goes to the wall. Samson says, "'Tis true, and therefore women, being the weaker vessels, are ever thrust to the wall. Therefore, I will push Montague's men from the wall and thrust his maids to the wall." Okay, there's a couple things happening here. I'm going to get my little whiteboard, and I'm going to talk while I do it. Okay, so, sex joke, poop joke happening simultaneously. While I... Um, sketch. I'm going to explain what's happening. Okay, so in Shakespeare's time, we have no closed sewers. Like, if you lived in the city, which London was a city, um, the sewers, like gutters on the edge of the street, would have also been functioning as sewers for sewage. So if you lived upstairs, like above your shop or your bedrooms were in the second story of your house, um, if you had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you would have used a chamber pot. Some of you already know this and some of you are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So a chamber pot is just, you went to the bathroom in a pot. And um, in the mornings, if you were wealthy enough, your um, servant, your maid, would have opened the windows, and I'm going to put, the, it's just so much easier for me if I put it back here. So, would have opened the windows and chucked the contents of your chamber pot into the gutter, like the low spot right here next to the road. So, this actually would have been more like, more like this. There would have been a little trough between sidewalk and the road there would have been this little low spot like a trough or a ditch 
and that would have been your rainwater and also your sewage would have smelled lovely, I'm sure. Um, so your contents would have chucked out of there. This is your sidewalk. So if you're like walking along the sidewalk and someone happens to be checking some um, chamber pot contents out the window, um, unfortunately you might get rained upon and not very nice rain either. It would have been disgusting. So I'm going to draw my fancy little So these are my super sophisticated drawings of my little full sketch um, stick figures. Okay, so here is like your woman and your man and they're walking down the street. So we can assume that if the contents are going this way, your chance of getting hit by them would have been less the closer you were standing to the wall of the house or the building that you're walking next to. So, um... Okay, so Samson says, or Gregory says, the weakest goes to the wall. So women, um, also anyone with like a higher social standing. So if it was like um, a man and a servant, the man would have walked closest to the wall and the servant would have walked out towards the street. Um, because the weakest, the one you want to protect or the one of the higher social status would have walked closest to the wall. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so women, if you were like gallant, you wouldn't have want your, wanted your lovely lady to be um, peed on or pooped on. So you would have had her walk next to the wall and you would have taken one for the team and walked out next to the street. So, so that's your poop joke there. Gregory's like, um, you're just afraid of a little poo. Um, and then there's also a pretty obvious for some of us sex joke in that um, Samson says women are the weaker vessels and they are ever thrust to the wall. Therefore, I will push Montague's men from the wall and thrust his maids to the wall. So he's going to um, push those Montague men out of the way and have his way with the maids. Um, so maids. Maids is an important word, and it's used often. Um, maid is not like a maid who does your laundry. It's um, a word that is used to describe a woman's social status or marital status. So you have M-A-I-D. So a maid is a virginal woman, a woman who has not been married or had sex. So um, Samson's going to deflower all those Montague women, he thinks, he claims. Okay. Um, and then Samson also says, when I have fought with the men, I will be civil with the maids. I will cut off their heads. The heads of the maids, so you'll actually cut the women's heads off. And Samson says, I, the heads of the maids, or their maiden heads, take it in the sense thou wilt. Another sex joke, because maiden head would have been virginity because once you were no longer a virgin, then you wouldn't be considered a maid anymore. You would be a matron. So a married woman or a woman who has had children or in the very literal sense, a woman who has had sex would be a matron. So um, Samson says he's going to, again, deflower all those Montague women. Um, and then... Sam Samson says, Me thou shalt feel well, I am able to stand, and tis known I am a pretty piece of flesh. Like, I'm a good-looking dude. And, you know, you can use your imagination with piece of flesh also. Says as well, and then Abram and Serving Man come in, and they're Montagues. And so Samson and Gregory have been giving themselves or each other a hard time. And they're like, you're such a coward, you're not going to do anything. And then here comes the Montagues, and they're both thinking, oh crap, now I have to do something, otherwise I'm going to look like a coward. So um, Gregory says, draw thy tool. Here comes the house of the Montagues. So he's original, like he's literally talking about pull your tool, um, which is your sword, from its sheath, which is like the thing that you keep your sword in on your hip. It's like a holster, but it's a holster for your sword. Um, 
I love this line. So draw thy tool, like get your sword out, they're coming. And then Samson says, my naked weapon is out. Quarrel, I will back thee. So they've just been having this little dirty talk about women and stuff. And then Samson says, my naked weapon is out, which it's like his sword is literally naked because it's not in its sheath. So like it's out where he can fight with him. But then there's also a little bit of a penis joke in there. Sorry if you're uncomfortable with that word, but you know, that's what it is. Okay, Gregory says, how, I'm, I switched pages, I'm on page three. How, turn thy back and run? What are you going to do, you big coward? Um, okay, now here's an important point. Samson says, let us take the law of our sides. Let them begin. Um, so Samson wants to start a fight, but he wants to make sure that he's not going to get in trouble for it. Like, no one's going to blame him. So he wants the Montagues to be the one to physically start the fight. Um, <laughs> okay, so Sam Gregory says, I will frown as I pass by and let them take it as they list. So I'll make a face at them. Um, and then they'll do whatever they're going to do. And Samson says, no, as they dare, I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them if they bear it. So modern day equivalent, biting your thumb is like flipping somebody else off. But, um, excuse me, they're like biting their thumbs back and forth at each other, making rude gestures. Okay, um, so Abram says, do you bite your thumb at us, sir? So it appears very, like, civil on the outside because they're calling them each other sir and, like, it's very formal, but they're, like, trying to instigate the other one to take the first punch here or swing the sword the first. Um, Samson says, I do my bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law of our side if I say I? No. No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I do bite my thumb, sir. Uh, and then they're like, are you trying to pick a fight? Blah, blah. Okay, and then I'm on page four now. It's like, um, I serve as good a man as you, so, you know, I'm a Capulet and a Montague, like, whatever. And then um, here comes Benvolio. So Benvolio is Romeo's cousin. And Gregory says to Samson, go ahead and say my, the man that I serve. So my master is what they would have called it. But like the guy I work for is better because here comes one of my pan master's kinsmen. So go ahead and start the fight now. Benvolio's on the way and he's got her back. We'll outnumber him. Okay. Um, draw if you be men. So the challenge has been thrown. Um, we have our first line from Benvolio is, part fools, put up your swords, you know not what you do. So Benvolio's personality is revealed from the very first line he speaks, and that's, put your swords down. You have no business fighting in the streets like this. Um, and then I'm going to have to cut this because I'm going to have to start talking faster. Um, I'll try to get through Tybalt. So we have no like context that they're actually fighting other than them talking about put your swords down and stuff like that. Um, and then, so you have to like read between the lines and that's why I want you to do the video. Okay, so Tybalt, his first line, which is revealing of his personality is, what, drawn in talk of peace? I hate the word, is I hate hell, all Montagues and thee, have at thee, at thee, coward. So Tybalt's first lines are, I hate the word peace, and um, quit talking, and put your money where your mouth is, and get your sword out, and let's do this. Let's fight. Um, then your citizens of the town come in, and they're trying to, they say, beat them down, down with the Capulets, down with the Montagues. Um, Capulet, Capulet says, what noise is this? Give me my long sword, ho. And ho just is like, oh, now. It doesn't mean like H-O-E, like ho. He's not calling his wife a name, by the way. A lot of people mess that up. And Lady Capulet um, says, a crutch. You don't have any use for a sword, you old man. You need a crutch, not a sword. Okay, and then I've got, I've only got 15 seconds, so I'm going to cut right here, and then I'm going to pick up on the next video.